Good morning, and welcome to Rediscovering the Truth. I'll be your host and teacher, Marquita Smith. I lead the truth in the spirit in Newport News, Virginia. And I'm actually going to continue a training series that I've been working on called The Coming Judgment. I had actually initially prepared uh, to teach about the Passover this week because we got a few weeks before Passover comes. However, instead, the Lord put on my heart to continue the series on the coming judgment because the judgment is coming. And there's an urgency in my heart and in the hearts of prophets all over the United States that this country must start to prepare for the judgment. We've seen little pieces of it. Lots of things have happened across this nation to get our attention on various issues, particularly concerning Israel. Because the Lord says in Zechariah that Israel is the apple of his eye, that whoever touches Israel touches the apple of his eye, and how he will repay those who do that. And the apple of his eye is the very pupil. So um, dividing Israel or counseling Israel to give up land for peace or any of those things um, leads a nation to judgment. And it's exactly what the United States is doing. On, on April 29th, we've actually given Israel that deadline. Uh, to have uh, conceded to some of these pressures for land for peace and giving up more land to the Palestinians in Eretz Israel, which is the land of Israel, uh, the sacred holy land of Israel that God himself says in Deuteronomy belongs to him and that it should not be given away or sold in perpetuity because it, the children of Israel are only tenants in his land. So if Israel can't even give it away, surely the nations can't pressure Israel to do so. Um, also, we've sinned against God in various other ways, ways that, that he has called us to repent for just breaking his, uh, his word, his scriptures, not listening to him. And so the Lord is doing many things in the earth to get our attention. Like I said, there have been lots of tragedies and challenges, but he's pressed something upon my heart this week, which he told me um, not to reject because I thought it was strange and unusual. Honestly, I said, you know, God, this uh, I'm not sure what you're doing here, but there's a movie coming out. It actually starts tonight. It opens tonight. It's called Noah. Um, and this is not a Christian-based film. It wasn't created by um, a Christian group or the directors and all of them. They're not believers at all, actually. Um, I don't even believe most of the cast are believers. However, God said he's using this movie to draw his people back to him. And I'm going to tell you specifically what happened in our conversation because today... This particular lesson is called The Coming Judgment, The Noah Movie Call. Because this movie is calling the United States to prepare and repent. And if we see it just as um, entertainment, we'll miss that. Because it is scripture and it's based off scripture. If we see it uh, just as coming out of the mind of a man, a very creative mind of a very creative man, then we will miss God's message in it. And this is uh, what he said to me. He told me that he has allowed the Noah movie to be created for such a time as this. And again, I said it, it is opening tonight. Tonight is uh, the sneak preview and then tomorrow is the official opening night. The Lord revealed this to me when I asked him, how do you want your prophets to get the message across the nation that we must prepare for the coming judgment and repent? This is what I was asking him. I've been asking him this for a while because he's really pressed upon my heart that as his uh, children who hear his voice, the prophets and intercessors throughout the United States, we've not done enough to sound the clarion call. You know, he looked for a man to stand in the gap and found none. He gave me that scripture this week and, and my heart was just crying out to him, I want to be that one or among those, not just the only one, because I'm, I'm praying that there are others. Um, but there are, uh, there's a, a call upon us to do whatever we can to get our nation to see that God's hand of judgment is hanging just above our nation and it is upon us. Uh, so that we would prepare for the coming judgment and we would repent. And you see Noah actually doing both. You'll even see it in the movie. And I've not seen the movie. I'm just telling you what the Lord prophetically revealed to me. That you will see Noah preparing for judgment and you will see Noah repenting in that movie. Even though he was considered righteous in his generation, he still turns himself and his family away from the ways uh, of the wicked people who were in the land, but toward God himself. Let me tell you, uh, what, what else the Lord said when I when I spoke that to him and I said how do you want your prophets to get the message across the nation that we must prepare for the coming judgment and repent he showed me the trailer for the Noah movie he brought that before my face and I went this is what you're using Lord and this is what he said even those in the world know something is coming 
but they don't realize that they heard it from me. They believe they've just been having their own ideas. Use this to help people turn back to me. And that's exactly what he wants us to do with regard to this particular movie. Um, it's so easy to see certain things as entertainment or theatrics, especially when they did not come out of the community of believers. It's so easy to, to cast them aside and say, well, the enemy is all in that. It's worldly. Um, it's not of God. But God, if he can speak through a donkey in Numbers to, 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 to warn the, the, the prophet uh, Balaam, who is being used by the enemy at this time, uh, if he can speak through that donkey to warn him of the angel that was there to, to slay him, which was judgment, then clearly God can use atheist directors um, and, 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 and people in Scientology as actors and, 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 and others who may be on the fence about their religion. He, may, he can use all of them to bring the message to the nation that he needs. Because the truth of the matter is, Christian theater is limited to Christian audiences. Those who are not Christians don't go to see it. But when the world produces something, the world supports it. And God is trying to reach everybody. He's not just trying to reach the body of believers, though he's really trying to get our attention. Um, movies like God's Not Dead, which is all in, in, in a wonderful uh, Christian film um, that teaches us how to stand up for our, our beliefs in the God of the universe, the creator of all things. Very important. You want to support those and be blessed by uh, Christian movies uh, like that one. But there's a message he's got to get to the rest of the nation and the rest of the world because he's not just trying to call believers. He says in Ezekiel that he wishes that none would perish. God wants to reach the whole world and he's trying to warn us just like he sent Jonah to the Ninevites. He was trying to warn the city of Nineveh. If any city could be con considered worldly, ungodly, being used by Satan, surely it would be Nineveh, which was the, the, the Assyrian capital. The way they treated Israel, which is why Jonah hated them and did not want to prophesy to them. He had been a good prophet up to that point, very faithful, committed, focused on the will of God, obedient uh, completely to what God wanted. But he did not want to speak to Nineveh. And he didn't want to speak to Nineveh because he knew all of the challenges that they had brought to Israel, the, the, the atrocities. They would rip open the pregnant women and take the babies out of their stomachs and dash them up against the rocks. Uh, they would put hooks in people's noses and drag them um, in full view of all of their community members. I mean, they did horrible things. They would take people to the edge of the cliffs and push them off the cliffs. That there were horrible atrocities that the that the, the Ninevites committed against the children of Israel. So Jonah hated them. He despised them and probably feared them a little bit too. Because a lot of time that hatred is mixed with some type of fear, uh, fear of man or, or fear of confrontation. But God sent him anyway and he spoke to Jonah, um, talking to him about how much he cared about the Ninevites. I actually want to turn there um, because Many of us may be Jonas in this day and age, and we would think, you know, God can't use a secular film, but it's, it's about the Bible. He can use whatever he wants to use because our God is resourceful, and he wants to use any and everything to bring his people back to him. And so I'm, I'm excited about the fact that he is going to use this movie because I have been asking him, how do we sound this alarm? How do we get the nation to see so I'm going to uh, go uh, to Jonah chapter 4. And this is what the Lord says to Jonah in chapter um, 4, verse 10 of the book of Jonah. This is what the Lord says to Jonah about Jonah. He was angry about the vine that grew up and then the worm ate the vine. and He no longer had any shade while he was sitting and waiting to see Nineveh get judged. He was waiting for the judgment to come because he hated them and he was hoping God was going to judge even though he knew that he was a God who relents. And so he's actually having this conversation with the Lord about the fact that he's angry about the plant. He's angry about Nineveh not being judged. And this is what the Lord says in verse 10. You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? And so what he was saying here is that these people are not a part of your group. They're not a part of the remnant. They're not a part of those who are called mine. But should I not be concerned about them when I created them? 
And we may not be interested in the world knowing that God's judgment is coming. We may only be interested in Christians, believers, Jews, children of Israel, children of God, knowing that God's judgment is coming. But he is interested in everybody knowing because he wants everyone to have an opportunity to repent. God loves the world, not just those who say they are his. And I'm going to prove it to you by a very uh, familiar scripture. I'm going to go to John 3.16, and then I'm going to read 17 also, because we usually stop at 16. I'm going to read uh, both 16 and 17 to help you to know that God loves the world and that he would move through any means he desires to draw the world back to him. And this is in John uh, 3, chapter, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, where Yeshua is talking to Nicodemus. But I'm reading it to you through the New International Version. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now watch verse 17. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. It didn't say save the body believers. It didn't say save the Christians. It didn't even say save the Jews. It said save the world. That takes us right back to Noah because God wanted to save the world when he sent the judgment through Noah. Let us go to Genesis or Bereshit, which means the beginning in both the Hebrew and um, the Greek, so that we can see this heart of God to save the world, not just those whom uh, who are considered he is. He's, he's looking in toward the future. He's looking at all the people and animals on the planet. And God is having mercy. Now, let us start with verse 9 of Genesis chapter 6. And I'm going to read again from the New International Version. It reads, This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all the people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. And in other translations it says gopher wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 50 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door on the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every, create, every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth, will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you. And you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Now, it's, it's really interesting to notice what happens in chapter 6, because that's not the beginning of chapter 6. It starts in verse 9, uh, the, the reading of Noah. But before that, you get to see all the wickedness in the earth. And I, I can tell, just from the movie trailers, um, that the directors of this movie, Noah, had only read the Bible version about Noah. They would not read from the Apocrypha, because the book of Enoch actually addresses Noah, the flood or the great deluge. Um, it addresses Noah's birth. Um, there's so much more that is addressed there. It, it addresses the, the demonic spirits that were once angels fall into the earth and how they corrupt the earth so that God becomes so angry with humanity. All of that is addressed in the book of Enoch, uh, which is a part of the Apocrypha that didn't make it into the scriptures. But we know from the scriptures that um, Noah is the grandson of Enoch who walks with the Lord. He was on the earth and then he walked completely with the Lord. But from that time, he actually had interaction with God and with the demonic forces that were corrupting the earth. And then he even spoke back with his son, Methuselah, who was the one that lived the longest on the earth, who is Noah's father. And so we see 
all of this um, happened. Actually, Methuselah is the Mech's father, and then the Mech, of course, becomes the father of Noah. Um, and you see all of this happening um, in Genesis chapter 5, but you only get little snippets, just a little genealogy. You don't get to see the behind the scenes that you see in the book of Enoch, where he himself is writing it. Enoch is, is writing uh, these goings on that are happening in the spiritual realm. When the, when the Bible says that Enoch walked with the Lord, he does. He just he just walks away and he is no more. They don't see him anymore. Um, and then he, he actually comes back and he has these conversations with Methuselah and with Lamech about Noah because they call to him at the ends of the earth just calling for him because they're not, they don't know what to make of this uh, unique child. Um, and you'll see in Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 that Enoch was faithful with God then he was no more because God took him away and he just sort of walks into the heavenly realm and he begins to minister to God and serve as a mediator between God and these fallen beings which is really key because it gives, there's an insight as to why God is destroying the earth and because judgment is coming to our nation and our world it's important that we recognize what happened the first time God judged the world because he says in the scripture that he would do it again, but this time by fire. And so we got to see what is happening in the world when God actually judges it. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 1. It says, uh, When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Um, and in the complete Jewish, it says, took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. In verse 3, then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. Notice that it says, and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now, let's talk about why this is important, because the fact that that was spoken is, is very important for what's happening. Happening here, and again, I told you it goes into more detail in the book of Enoch. These fallen spirits, according to the book of Enoch, had not completed their angelic training, they did not understand how important it was for them to be intercessors for humans. Um, they did not understand the, the, the weightiness of the power that they had, and instead, they come to the earth, they, they abandon their training, they come to the earth, and they begin to teach humans defiled things. They interact with humans in defiled ways, ways that they're not supposed to interact, like um, laying with the women and, and begetting natural sons and having families because it's not for angels to have families. It's for humans to have families. Angels are servants of God to, to operate in the spiritual realm, to serve as intercessors for the children of God, the people of God who are humans. But we see them failing at that job and, and abandoning it for their own will. Um, and as this happens, and you see a little bit of that in Revelation. The book of Revelation talks about um, the, the dragon who knocks one-third of the stars out of the sky. And those are the angels that he took with him to be demons. And the fact that they've been flung to the earth and woe unto the earth um, because the dragon is now among you. And so we see these things being spoken of in Revelation and through various parts of the Bible. Um, but what we understand uh, from that, um, and additionally from the book of Enoch, is that these demons begin to train humans how to sin. They teach humans about war, they teach humans about weapons, um, witchcraft, other things that really um, pervert humanity. And then plus from laying with the women and creating these uh, large beings, the Nephilim, they actually um, pollute the DNA, the genetic line of humans. Um, where God is saying, I have to get rid of this because their sin is increasing more and more and more and more and more. They're getting completely out of control with this demonic influence that they are not delivered from. And this is what becomes very important. I read to you John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, to give you an understanding of why salvation in Messiah Yeshua is essential. Because it is through the blood of Messiah that our sins are atoned for, which means they are paid for once and for all. The animal sacrifices never pay for our sins. The sin atonement is paid for by Messiah Yeshua. So Yeshua pays for our sins. But not only that, 
He also cleanses us with his blood so that this, the connection that humans have with demonic forces can be broken. That humans can be delivered from demonic forces. And as we are delivered, then the earth is cleansed and delivered as well. Romans chapter 8 um, says that the, the all creation um, cries out and awaits for the, son of, the sons of God to be revealed. Which is very important for us to recognize. It actually says it's Romans 8 chapter 19. says the creation waits eagerly for the sons of God to be revealed. Verse 20. For the creation was made subject to frustration, not willingly, but because of the one who subjected it. But it was given a reliable hope that it too would be set free from its bondage to decay and would enjoy the freedom accompanying the glory that God's children will have. Now, the reason that is important is because God cleansed the earth with the deluge or the flood. But then he also killed animals, plant life, many other things suffered. But what we've got to understand is that God was doing a complete cleansing. He said he made a covenant with Noah and that he would, through Noah, rebuild the human race. So he was cleansing the defilement from the animals, the plants, everything that had been defiled by this, these demonic connections that the humans had made. And because we've been, given, we've been given dominion on earth, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, we'll see that through that dominion, where, when we're in a place of, of seeking God and receiving his glory and we're in fellowship with God, then the earth and the animals and the plants flourish because they actually benefit from that which is happening with us. We have dominion over them. God gave us that dominion in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27 to subdue the, the, the creatures and the, and the earth and then the sea and all the plant life he's given to us. He says that in Genesis. He says it again to Noah um, after they get off of the boat in chapter uh, 9 of Genesis. But what becomes important to note here is that when we sin, when we connect with demons, because that's what sin does. When we sin, it opens a portal to the demonic and it, we create relationships with forces that we can't see, demons that we can't see. And there are times when we do see them. Most religions that are not um, of, based off of the Bible, they're not from the Judeo-Christian um, background. When I say Christian, I mean biblical Christianity. Because there's a Christianity that's very pagan. Um, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about biblical Christianity. Um, and um, biblical Judaism, because there's also paganism and Judaism as well. Um, if it's based off the Bible, that's what I'm speaking of. But many of the other religions, not Bible-based, have gods, deities, powers, forces that people have seen, and they have stories about them, which we call myths and mythology, but oftentimes they've been actual interactions with demons. And the reason I know this is because I've, I've, I've interacted with a few of them through the spiritual eye that the Lord has given me. I've seen them and I've watched them operate. The Lord has just allowed me to observe that I would understand the demonic realm. And a lot of the spirits that people talk about, the gods and deities that are mentioned in the mythology, they're actually demons. They weren't apparitions. They weren't made up. They were demons who called themselves gods because they wanted to be worshipped by the humans. Because the devil has that same goal that he always had from the beginning to make himself like the Most High. <clears throat> So he's trying to receive this worship from humans and to subdue the humans and get the humans to submit to him because humans have dominion on the earth. So if the humans submit to the demons, then the demons now have dominion on the earth because they take from us what's ours. This is what is happening in Genesis chapter 6. The demons have now subdued the earth because they've subdued the, those who have dominion on the earth, which is the humans. And so the demons are using them. Now, when you watch the movie Noah, I'm telling you, I haven't seen it, but this is what the Lord has said to me. This comes out tonight, so I couldn't have seen it. That you will see that, that demonic force among those who are wicked. You will see that they are being influenced by something beyond themselves that is making them extremely evil. And we see it in our society right now with pedophiles and, and the sex trade. Stuff that, that is just completely um, counter humanity. It is inhuman, inhumane, just disgusting practices. Um, uh, uh, people uh, uh, eating each other, cannibalism, um, all types of things. We know this does not come out of human nature. It doesn't come directly from a human. Why is this happening? Uh, uh, homicidal maniacs. And we've got even TV shows about them, like Criminal Minds and stuff like that. All the, 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 the police shows where they're trying to figure out why these people are, are, are committing these heinous crimes. It's a demonic influence. Even certain uh, forms of insanity and certain ailments are connected with demons because they're connected to the person. They're oppressing that human or even using the human if they found a way in. Um, and this is not just through through uh, interaction with the humans themselves, but sometimes with interactions with the humans bef who came before them, their family line. Like you'll see it with the sons of <clears throat> of Cain, that that his descendants, um, who actually one of them is actually in this movie, uh, the Noah movie, um, his descendants become more evil than him. 
And this is because of the demonic influence that happened with Cain. When Cain opened the door for that spirit of murder, you'll see that the demon of murder, the demon of war, continued in his family line to just destroy human life through them. Because it, and it got stronger and stronger with every generation because the covenant was not broken and there wasn't a repentance in going back to God. Now, this is, this is essential to understand because this is why God judges the earth during Genesis chapter 6. He judges the earth because of the sin. And in the book of Enoch, the Lord actually attributes these sins to the particular demons. It's very interesting to note that God says that it's their fault that these humans are doing these sins and that he will judge them one day. The demons for the sins that these humans commit at the advice, instruction, and uh, uh, influence of these demonic forces. Now, prior to the coming of Messiah, when humans were connected with demons, there was no there was no deliverance for us. Once a human became connected with a demon, the only way to solve that problem in a community was to kill the human. There was no deliverance. There was no way to separate the human from that demon at that time because the human had made some type of choice for themselves or their family that allowed the demon into their family's dominion um, and gave their dominion as a family to the demon. Now, Messiah Yeshua comes fully God, fully man. And, and the fact that he is fully man is so important. So many want to fight that. And so many want to negate that Yeshua is fully man. But he is fully God and fully man. He came in the form of a man yet without sin. Without sin. And the reason he had to be without sin, that the DNA of sin had not transferred to him. That the demonic um, influence that is passed on through sin, actually traceable in DNA, um, would not be in interconnected with Messiah Yeshua. Instead, he only has that DNA of the Father in Heaven, though he's in the human form. So with that, he has the dominion on the earth that the Father originally gave to humans because he's a human. So with that dominion, he gives that dominion back to God and he pays for all the sins of humanity so then humans can now be separated from the demonic oppression and get back our dominion on the earth. That is what happens when we become believers. And this is why it says in John 3, 17, that the Lord didn't send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He's saving the world from our own sin sickness and the dominion that we've given to Satan through our sins. And really regaining, retrieving that dominion back for us, giving it back to humanity, that we might right the wrongs that we set in place through our own misguided dominion. That is Romans chapter 8 right there. You see Romans chapter 8 where now we're not condemned. We are glorious, we're justified, we're walking in the power of God, nothing can separate us from God, uh, we are super conquerors, um, and the creation is awaiting for us to be revealed because the creation is restored by us getting our dominion back in the earthly realm. Now here's the challenge. Messiah Yeshua came 2,000 years ago, but humanity is still following, for the most part, demonic advice, demonic instruction, demonic influence, rather than following God. This is the reason we will experience judgment. Because God not only speaks to believers, He speaks to all of us. He speaks through nature. He speaks through our conscience. He speaks in dreams and visions. He speaks to our heart. He speaks to our minds. A lot of times we think it's our own idea, as He said with this Noah movie, that the, the writers and directors think they're operating on their own ideas. But really, it's God using them. They don't know that He's using them. He does it to all humanity because we're all still connected to Him. As long as we have the breath of life in us, we still have a connection to God and we're still able to be redeemed. If we choose for God to redeem us, then through our own redemption, we, we turn back to God, the dominion He gave to us, and He's able to clean it up through us. Not in spite of us or instead of us, but through us. He starts to shut down the things that are evil through our prayers and through our works in the earth. He starts to, to convict and judge the wicked through our prayers and through his works through us. God starts to restore order in the earth through the humans to whom he's given the dominion. He doesn't want to take the earth back from us. He just wants to save the earth. He wants to cleanse the earth through us. So he redeems us from the demonic oppression that we might be free to use our dominion rightly for for. for uh, causes that will create growth, prosperity, um, compassion among humans. Now, if you need to know a little bit more about this demonic oppression, I've actually done uh, another series of teachings on it um, at Rediscovering the Truth. You can go to www.truthandspirit.org and you'll see all the videos there or you can watch them on our YouTube channel. 
um, Truth and Spirit Live. You can also, if you're watching it online on our website, if you click the banner above my head, you'll actually go to Rediscovering the Truth, that page. And on that page, you can see all the trainings. Look for the one about demonic oppression, which will give you an understanding of how God breaks us free of that so that the things that are under our dominion can now be cleansed by the Lord through us. But it's only made possible by that sacrifice of Messiah Yeshua. So we've got to believe that he's come to break us free of this. And then we've got to receive that payment, which is his blood, and become one with him, fellowship with him, commune with him, allow him to minister through us instead of the demons that have been using us. Now, this is a big deal. I'm telling you right now. This is a big deal. Because if we don't recognize what's happening, if we don't recognize that... Um, that God is about to judge the earth because he's actually, he's told me that in less than a year, less than one year, we will start to see the effects of judgment in our land. This is the United States of America and I'm on the East Coast, so specifically on the East Coast of the United States of America, but we will see it throughout the nation. We have already been seeing it throughout the nation. But I want to encourage you to know um, that though he said that the judgment is coming, he also said that he would be with us. Um, he's given me a prophetic word that is um, on uh, my website, templeprophecy.com. And if you're looking at it here online, you, if you click that dove right up here, like in the top corner here, um, you'll, you'll be able to go to templeprophecy.com, click prophecies. And the very top one is the one that, that is uh, about the fact that the judgment is coming within a year. Um, and he actually gave that to me on March 20th, 2014, but he has been counting down um, for quite some time that the judgment is coming. He's been telling me this for 12 years, and since December 2010, he's told me it's coming very soon. Um, but now he says less than a year. Um, you also can go to templeprophecy.com and click the yellow tab, Prophecies, and click the top prophecy, um, and you'll read about the fact that it's coming in less than a year. But again, in that prophecy, you see very clearly that God says he's going to be with us. He's going to be with us throughout it, just as he was with Noah. This is important that we identify with Noah. Because when we start to see challenging things, we may not see water. We may see water because many of the prophets have been seeing huge tidal waves hitting the East Coast. Many of the prophets have been seeing earthquakes that are going to cause some of our land to, to really fall into the sea. So you may see water. You may also see fire, terrorism, bombings, nuclear threats. Those things uh, will cause fire in the earth. And the Lord said he would judge the earth by fire. In Revelation it says that two thirds of the earth will be burned up by fire. Now this becomes very important to recognize because when we start to see these signs, we're going to need to identify with Noah. We're going to need to identify with the fact that God would be with us throughout horrible tragedies and atrocities happening on the earth. We're going to need to know how to prepare and we should start right now. We're going to need to know how to repent, and we should start right now. <coughs> Not waiting until these things transpire, but being proactive right now and preparing for that which is to come. If you go to um, my website, templeprophecy.com, and click the tab, No A Movie Call, you'll see on there that this is the call for us to prepare and to repent. There's another revelation that the <coughs> Lord gave me years ago. I want to say it was in 2000, It was 2003. Um, where he actually gave me a word for my family, but it's true for the family of faith and the family of God, all people everywhere, as to how we need to repent and prepare. It talks about storing up food and water. It talks about getting to know your neighbors, because the proverb says that in times of calamity, better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. So you need to know the people who live around you. You need to take an inventory of the resources you have and what's in your neighborhood, because if real challenges come, you may not be able to get to the next town. You may not be able to go to Walmart. You're going to need to, to make the best out of what is there in your community. You may also want to be prepared to evacuate, have bag, bags prepared for you and your family with food and games, things to keep them preoccupied if you have small on children, um, those things to get you out of town, extra medicines, because you may not have access to those. These are things we want to do to prepare for the fact that judgment is coming. But in the midst of that preparation, while we're being uh, smart, we're being wise, we're thinking about what to do, we also want to repent. We want to turn back to God. And there are two scriptures that I want to read to you, which you will find on that website. Um, templeprophecy.com, um, the Noah movie call. You want to go there and you'll see these prophecies as well. But in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 37, it talks about the fact that um, that these are like the days of Noah because the Son of Man is coming. But I'm going to start at verse 26. It says, But about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. 
as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the time of the coming of man, of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in a field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken, the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at the time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come in an hour you do not expect him. We've got to be prepared because these challenges come to prepare for the Son of Man. Yeshua is coming to rule the world and he is not going to share it with demons. If we're in covenant or in connection or even oppressed by demons, we have to be washed away with the judgment as well so that his new reign, his new era can start with cleanness on the earth as we see with Noah and his family. And they weren't perfect. You see right after the flood, Noah gets drunk, um, Ham sees him naked. And, and so we see that they are not perfect. It's not about perfection. It's about submitting to the will of God. Knowing his will, submitting to it. Repentance is all about agreeing with God that we've sinned and allowing him to turn us away from that sin. We can't stop sinning. We're not capable of it. That's why he sent his son to save the world, not to judge it. Because the son empowers us to seek God for the deliverance and the healing we need to turn away from the sins that are keeping us down. Now the, set, the next thing we want to do, um, we're repenting, we also want to prepare. And I'm going to look at 1 Peter chapter 3. And in verse 20, it talks about the days of Noah, but I'm going to have to go up just a little bit uh, before that. And I'm going to just explain to you what's happening in chapter 3. In chapter 3, Peter is, is telling us to do good, to do good things, to do the good things we ought to do in our, our earth, to be useful people in our communities, um, to love the Lord and to, to, to be mindful of his ways. So you see a repentance happening there. Um, but in verse 13... Um, he talks about the fact that we may suffer, but that suffering shouldn't be because we've done wrong. Because I should be repentant. I may suffer because I'm actually preparing for what I know is coming. And it says in verse 13, For who will hurt you if you become zealous for what is good? This is what we got to do now. Be zealous for, for letting people know it's time to prepare. It's time to repent. Verse 14, But even if you do suffer for being righteous, you are blessed. Moreover, don't fear what they fear or be disturbed, but treat the Messiah as holy. As Lord in your hearts, while remaining always ready to give a reasoned answer to anyone who asks you to explain the hope you have in you, yet with humility and fear. Keeping your conscience clear so that when you are spoken against, those who abuse the good behavior flowing from your union with Messiah may be put to shame. For, it, for if God has in fact will that you should suffer, it is better that you suffer for doing what is good than for doing what is evil. And you'll see in the movie that this is exactly what happens to Noah. He's suffering for doing good. Verse 18. For the Messiah himself died for sins, once for all, a righteous person on behalf of unrighteous people, so that he might bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but brought to life by the Spirit. And in this form, he went and made a proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, in the days of Noah, when God waited patiently during the building of the ark, in which a few people, to be specific, eight, were delivered by means of water. This also prefigures what delivers us now, the water of immersion which is not the removal of dirt from the body, but one's pledge to keep a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah, or Jesus Christ. He has gone into the heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. Remember I told you, he's not going to co-reign with demons. No, everything is subject to him. And if we're connected to those things that oppose him, we will have to be pushed aside during the judgment as well. We'll have to be removed as in the days of Noah, which we see here in um. 1 Peter chapter 3. Let us prepare as Noah did. Let us do everything God said. Pray. Ask him what to do. Follow the instructions that the Holy Spirit gives you. Tell others in your community. Be faithful. Prepare, repent. Prepare, repent. This is what we're doing now and this is what we're telling everyone. Join me in the Noah movie call where God is not just trying to reach believers but the whole world. He wants everybody to know that judgment is coming. Tell people to prepare and repent. You can visit the website at Truth and Spirit. Um, actually, it's not on Truth and Spirit. It's on templeprophecy.com slash noahmoviecall.html. And if you just go to templeprophecy.com, you'll see Noah Movie Call and you can click that. You can also join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash noahmoviecall. And then on that Facebook, you can post prophecies. 
Uh, you can post post revelations. You can post uh, preparation uh, that ways that people can prepare because we need to know practically some things we can do to be prepared for the coming judgment because we don't know what will happen, but we want to be faithful and we want to be ready. Prepare and repent and tell others to do the same. Next week, I'll be sharing with you about the Passover. Should the Lord release me from talking about this coming judgment? But even in the Passover, we're going to look at what, it, what it's like to be a missed judgment because God was judging Egypt. Yet to turn to God and to be a refuge and to be found in a place of refuge, which was Goshen for the children of Israel. No matter where they went, the plagues did not touch them uh, following with that fourth plague. So we want to learn about that as we prepare for Passover. Uh, join us also this weekend for the blood moons uh, prophecy being fulfilled in 2014 and 2015. We're learning about the fact that those two coming blood moons in April are going to signify um, some Bible fulfillment, Joel chapter 2 in specific, uh, specifically. And we want to know what that means for the signs of our times. Messiah is coming, and these are signs of his coming. And before his coming, we know judgment has to hit the earth. Let us be prepared and repent. I look forward to seeing you next week. Blessings.